So we've talked about smoothing before um, and you know when when to use it and how, how to work with it a little bit, but we haven't really talked about some of the I don't know, mathematical underpinnings of what is exactly happening when we smooth something. Um, so I'm just going to go over that briefly here now. Um, so we can find smooth in two different places. There's a button for it in the toolkit and it's under es edit mesh or sorry, mesh and then smooth. There is an options box. I would not, there's not, the, the basic settings here are fine. Um, there's not really any um, differences you need to be concerned about right now. Um, I'd say the key thing is actually just the first option right here, division levels. That's the one you have to worry about, how many division levels. Um, and by default, it's set to one. So what happens, is I have this thing here, um, and it's a basic square. I'm actually going to bring subdivisions down to one. Um, so it's just a square. Um, and then I'm going to hit the smooth button right here. Now, because this is flat, it's not actually changing the shape. This is the only time that would ever happen is if you have something perfectly flat and perfectly square. If you have anything else, it'll, it'll change the shape. But what it's doing is it looked at the edges and said, okay, we have an edge here and we have an edge here. So we're going to put one in the middle, right? A subdivision. We are subdividing it once. And then, all right, we have an edge here and we have an edge here. And so we're going to put an edge in the middle. We are going to subdivide it once. Now that makes it sound like it's going to double your resolution. However, it won't. It's going to go up exponentially because we have area. We have, you know, X times Y. So if we add one subdivision this way and add one subdivision this way, we actually end up with four new subdivisions. Um, so it's not two times as much resolution, it's four times as much re resolution. And every time you up that number, it's going to go up more and more than you think, um, which is why it can get so tricky to be dealing with this. So I, I smoothed it once, right? So I added one subdivision each. I've got four squares now. If I hit smooth again, I don't have eight squares, I have 16 because it's subdivided each division once. Um, if I put this up to even two, now I have 32, right? Yes, 32. Um, if I was to put it up again, I'd have 64. Um, actually, no, I should have 64. One, two, three, four. Yeah, no, this is 64, not 32. I'm doing my math wrong. Um, and bringing this up over and over is adding so much more geometry. So first of all, with rare exceptions, you're going to set that to one. Um, but then how does this, how does this like work in real life? Um, so we've got a couple of squares here. And one thing we can do, I'm sorry, they're not squares, they're cubes. Um, but one thing we can do is in, instead of pressing the smooth button, which can accidentally get turned on, you know, I didn't, I didn't undo this far enough. Like what if I forget to do that and I don't go back to, I can't get back to this, right? Um, so we can do a smooth preview and a smooth preview involves hitting three on the keyboard. So I'm gonna leave this preview here as a control for a moment. Um, but hitting three on the keyboard shows us approximately what it would look like. You can't animate with this. Like you, like if you render it, it's not gonna, you're not gonna see it. You can't run particles against this. If you run particles against this, it's going to, the particles are going to hit these sharp corners that are up here, because this is where the geometry actually is. And you can even see the number of edge loops that currently exist, right? Um, it's just a matter of like, um, kind of fake displaying what it would look like. So um, if I really smooth this, this is what we get right? Not the same thing. This is actually smoother. Um, maybe because it's going down to two, I'm not sure. Um, if I hit undo on this, maybe I can, yeah, that's closer. So this, this fake smooth is, is smoothing things more than you may want to anyways. Um, but it's a decent place to start. And it's also not permanent because I can hit the number one, go back to my square. This, if I do anything else, I, I kind of log this in place because it becomes part of the history. So if I then, you know, take a face and extrude it or something, that's it. That, that, that smooth is in there. It's not going anywhere. It's, it's stuck behind this extrude. Um, so be careful of that. 
right? Um, but you can see as whether I'm fake smoothing or real smoothing these cubes, they are changing shape substantially. They are, if I hit two, I can actually see the original cage. I can see the original shape and what happens to that shape. Now we've gone over um, ways to fix this before because most things will eventually at some point in their history end up smoothed, um, some point in rendering. Um, and one of the ways we've gone about that is beveling edges. So I can grab a few of the edges anyways, and I can go to bevel, um, turn off camphor, simply I'm using this to simply add more geometry. Now, whether you add more geometry through using this bevel or through just adding more geometry with inserting edge loops is, is entirely up to you. I'm just using the bevel because it's fast. Um, but the more geometry we add here, the, the less it's going to change shape. Because if we go back to this one, what's happening is it's not only adding a new set of edge loops here, a new set here, it's averaging the distance between the new and the old ones, which is why this recoils and comes into here. But if we add, we got an edge loop, edge loop, right? And then two more on this side. Um, it's not changing the shape, right? Because I turned off camphor. So I'm just adding the edge loops just to have them there that when I go to smooth this, it maintains that part of the shape. Whether it's fake smooth or real smooth, it maintains that part of the shape. Um, if I wanted to maintain the other parts of the shape, I would have to select all of them. Um, so if I undo... All right, so I pause the video to select all the edges and, whoops, there it is. Um, and I turned off camphor and I can turn this fraction to like 0.05 or something, you know, something small. And then when I go into object mode, you have to be in object mode to smooth. Well, no, that's half true. When I go to smooth it, right, and it doesn't, it's a far cry from this. <laughs> <laughs> right? So just two little edge loops around all the little corners. And now it still looks like a cube, right? Um, it's just a matter of now the edges look a little bit nicer than they did before, which would be true regardless of smoothing. Uh, well, um, if you bevel with a camphor, they would look nicer um, because it, it would be doing basically the same thing as the smooth. We turn this. Come on. There we go. All right, it's looking pretty similar to what it did before, although it's a little bit more rounded, right? Whereas if you bevel with the camphor off and then smooth, it's a really tight corner, right? So you can, if you know things are eventually going to be smoothed you can kind of hold that in your back pocket and not round them out so much with a camphor. Now it depends on what you need it to look like also. Like if you need really fine tuned edges and you need them to stay sharp, then you might bevel with the camphor off. Um, all right. Now there is um, another thing we need to consider. So I have this, I, I kind of took a cylinder, got rid of the bad faces and then worked it a little on purpose. Um, so if I smooth this, right, I lose everything. Uh, <laughs> everything is everything is gone. Um, so I can go into edge mode and I can double click and I can double click and get those edge loops and I can bevel, camphor off. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, good enough. Um, I turn on three. Okay, got the top part, but we have to remember, of course, the in whoops, the inside corner as well needs to be beveled. Times like this, I wish it remembered my settings. There we go. And now if I hit three, all right, there we go. Um, but one thing that also does happen, um, and I haven't been able to break this enough, unfortunately, um, is depending on how you have things drawn out, you can lose a little bit of the shape. So this used to, you can tell by the cage, this these um, edges used to stick out a little bit more. I'm wishing I could like, get them to stick out more and more, but unfortunately they're not cooperating. Um, I did this by the way, by using soft select. There we go. We're just gonna, we're gonna push this out to the extreme 
just to like prove a point. There we go. Turn off soft select. So we're here. And then I hit three. Oh, it's actually doing a very good job. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to break it in this direction. Um, but the, the moral of the story, essentially, is this. So these sharp edges here, the, um, if I go like these edges, this edge, right? These things that I beveled, that's easy to see. But if you pull this face out really far and it doesn't want to stay there, how do you get it to stay? Well, sometimes the answer is you don't. Sometimes the answer is you overshoot um, on the shape. And then you, um, you, it, you know that the smooth will bring it back. Now, in this case, um, it's actually doing a pretty good job of interpreting what I want. If we were to look at one that doesn't, there it is. All right. Um, then what would end up happening is I could, there we go, focus in on that. If I move that up and move that out, this is a bad example because there's a better solution, but there it is. So I overshot it by a little bit, but by pulling that edge out when it's smoothed, it's now as tall as it's supposed to be. And I could bring it in a little bit. There we go. Ah. There. Um, so I brought that edge out a little bit too far. It looks really stupid on smooth, but then when you smooth it, um, it puts the edge where you want it to be. Now, this is not something you would use with sharp edge things like this. That's, that doesn't work at all. Um, it's something you use when you have rounded edge stuff like this, um, except this one's behaving better than I anticipated. <laughs> so I, I, I'm unable to break it. Um, but yes, yeah, sometimes when it comes to curved areas, you might have to overshoot them a little for when they get smoothed, especially if you're trying to keep your poly count really low. If you have a really high poly count, um, like this would if you smoothed it, if I smooth it just one subdivision, take a look at that. That's, that's a pretty heavy amount of polygons. Um, I maybe didn't need three subdivisions on that camphor, or maybe you could have only, you know, gone away with the one and just had like the one extra edge loop on each side. Um, right. But, um, if you are trying to keep the poly count much lower, then you have to do a little bit less with beveling a little bit more with moving edges around. All right. Um, but this is what happens with smoothing. Now in terms of handing things in for this class, um, I would 100% for right now, stick with the fake smooth. Um, so I'm going to undo until it's not smoothed anymore. There it is, right? Yes. Um, and I'll hit three. And it remembers that setting for that item, which is different than the setting for this item, et cetera, et cetera, which is different than the setting for this item. Um, and so I recommend the smooth preview, hitting three on the keyboard, see what it looks like. Um, because I, as your professor, can easily just go and hit one and be like, oh, it looks like this when it's not smoothed. Um, but it can help to it's it's good to see what it'll look like smooth because most things do get smoothed but if you're clicking the smooth button before render time you risk kind of messing up your model um, a few people had this happen on the midterm they smoothed stuff and then they went and did other things and went oh crap i can't get rid of it um so and so we're not dealing with finished products yet we're not dealing with oh this is the final render of our film situations yet so one on the keyboard gets you back to your exact geometry three previews it to shows you it the preview with the cage so you can see the original thing stick with stick with the smooth preview um, for most of what you're doing